The level of protest I've called um, cultural, countercultural, was primarily um, um, relevant to the lives of um, middle class whites because uh, the minorities uh, in our society were still struggling with, uh, uh, on another front, which is to gain social justice access to the affluent society. So you can imagine that there would be a difference between those who are on the outside of that society and those who are on the inside of it. I once had a, an experience with a student of mine in the late, late 60s who found himself out on a picket line protesting with uh, um, local blacks about employment in, um, I think it had to do with employment in hotels in San Francisco, some issue of that kind. It was, it was an issue having to do with social justice and, and, and um, and I remember him telling me that he felt very odd about what he was doing because what he was doing was protesting in behalf of black Americans who were denied access to a social system from which he himself was trying desperately to escape. <laughs> and he said, this is kind of absurd. I, here I am trying to gain other people a right <laughs> which I have and don't value. <laughs> what I want to do is get out of the society. I don't want to work in hotels. I don't want to work for IBM. I don't want to. I don't want to work <laughs> for a paycheck. I don't want to work 40 hours a week. Uh, and what he wanted to do was paint. Uh, he wanted to live the life of an artist. <laughs> and so you can see that what you're talking about here are populations that are in a sense on different historical horizons. You know, some someone once said that we still live in a world today. Uh, that can be divided between uh, Calcutta problems, <laughs> which is simply surviving through the night uh, and not starving to death, and um, Stockholm problems, or what we might here call Marin County problems, which is also how to survive through the night without committing suicide. Uh, the, uh, in both cases, the misery, the suffering is very great, but they're different forms of suffering. One's physical privation, and the other is some sense of psychic privation. And they are both life-threatening problems, but they take place at different times in history for different people. So, you know, s clearly through the, the, the 50s and the 60s, one of the opening shots of the whole protest movement was the civil rights movement. And that was an appropriate struggle uh, to gain access to uh, the mainstream of American society by people who had been locked out. And that influence uh, was extremely important because what the black protest did was to unmask the hypocrisy, the moral failure of American society. To that degree, it served as grist for the mill of those affluent white kids who were saying this society is no damn good. And they could cite as evidence of that um, the problems of uh, you know, racial injustice in America. Uh, but in turn, what they were concerned about, those we've identified as a counterculture, uh, was simply changing that culture entirely and not simply putting more people into it. These are very different issues and they overlap in the same period of history but they are on different levels.